Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain Exchange, and I want to uh, let you know I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting, but I'm also here to create projects that will encourage people who've been painting for a while to, to you know, come contribute and also um, keep uh, painting and that kind of thing. So today we're going to work on something a little bit different. We're going to work on a seagull. Now, the reason I picked a seagull is simple. I picked a seagull because everybody knows what a seagull is. We have an international audience, and I think it's really difficult when I paint something that no one has seen. So this is the little the little seagull that we're gonna be painting. This is two fires on him. I don't know that I wanna do more than that. I'm pretty happy with the two fires on him. Um, so I, I took my little, took my little drawing, it's, uh, I have this, the, tra the transfer paper, Sorrel, S-A-R-A-L, on the back, and I use the darkest side of the transfer paper, so you can see it's light there, dark there. And I just put him on my plate, and I put him off center, and I did that intentionally because I, I just, I think, now in a case like this, you see how small his legs are? They're like skinny, 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 and his nose and beak and stuff, okay. I'm going to put the background on first, and then I'm going to put him in. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I can go over his legs with the background color, and it won't matter. I can wipe out his legs. And I can go over his head with the sky color, and it won't matter. And I can wipe out his head. Now, I did uh, trace him on here with, um, with this uh, Sharpie, the red Sharpie. And the reason I did that is because I do intend to go over his head with the color of the sky and stuff and then be able to wipe it off. And if you just use the tracing paper, it will wipe off with you. So colors we're going to be using today. Now, if you don't have these, like I've said before, you don't need these exact colors. This is just what I like to use. If you have stuff that's even close, um, that's fine. Um, so... I have a wheat, and my wheat is more like a tan, but um, I love wheat. It's just, it's one of those colors that I haven't used it in a long, long time. So it, it just, it's yellow, but it's not yellow, and it's kind of cool. Um, this is a silver gray. I couldn't read it right away. And this is a Copenhagen gray. So if you have a light gray or a dark gray, and you mix a little bit of Copenhagen blue in it, you can get, or even baby blue, you can get like a cope, cope gray. Then I have white and black. No big surprise there. This is mixing yellow. I don't need much. If I use it at all, it'll be on the beak. Um, warm brown gray. If you don't have warm brown gray, I was trying to think there's another color like it. Oh, Ashes of Roses. It's, it's very similar. So if you have one or the other, um, we're going into baby blue. I have a little bit of Copenhagen here. And uh, Ashes of Roses, we talked about warm brown gray. We talked about these, all these colors. Are, are, oh, this is warm brown green. Sorry, this is brown. Yeah, this is the gray. These two are very similar. And then, um, what is this? This is, oh, this is just a medium brown of some kind that I have there. I have a chartreuse and I have the rich brown. So if you have those colors, great. We aren't going to use the greens today. We aren't going to use the browns today. So don't, don't worry about that if you don't have those colors today you don't need them we're just going to put in and that's why i say this is easy this is for beginners it's a simple plate to do all you have to do is get the bird right i'm going to be using quite a bit this time uh, my filbert brush for the background and everything it just is a nice smooth brush and it works really well as i said i'm going to start with the background just in the center section i'm not doing the outside edge until the very end I'm using turpentine. I'm using turpenoid if you care. Uh, you can use anything that works for you. It doesn't have to be a fast drying or anything. It's entirely up to you. And with the sky, um, I'm just going to make it real filtery. You want to leave a few clouds here and there. I don't want it real dark. So I'm just fluffing, <laughs> if you want to say. Doing sea strokes. And they're just sort of going across, and I'm just deciding what looks like clouds and what doesn't. Now, one thing I did learn from doing the first version of this 
is that you need to get the color close to the bird. And that's one of the reasons why I put the, you can see it's running a little bit, but I put the, uh, the red on there because I want to make sure he has color. Okay, and then I'm going to do a few over here. Not much. And a few back here, okay? And then now we're going to start on the water, okay? So I'm just going to kind of make these a little wispier. There we go. And those are my clouds. Now, if you don't like your clouds and you think you need more clouds or, or, or um, you need to make them a little less uh, um, obvious, you can use your, your sponge and just kind of clean them out. Like in here, I'd like that one to come down that way and maybe have a little there. there. Okay. And up in here, it's a little dark. There we go. We got a little there. Okay. So that's my clouds. Not difficult at all. And now I'm going to do um, the water behind him. And the water behind him is, is fairly simple. I'm using Copenhagen. Um, I'm going to start out with a little bit of a baby blue, though. I want the um, I want the water to be about there, and I want it to be straight-ish, because <laughs> obviously, is he? Wait a minute, he's okay. He's here, here. So I'm just drawing a line so I can see where I want my water to be. I know it's all kind of light. Can you see my line there? And now I'm going to take my Copenhagen blue and I'm just going to start putting the color in. And I'm just plunking the color down. Oopsie. Getting up there. There we go. Get some color on this side. Trying not to go over the bird because he does run a little bit, but. Okay. And then I want to smooth a little bit of it there away from the edge. And a little bit over here, I want to smooth. Not much, though. A little bit here, because water flows across, not up and down. So if you get too much up and down in there, you're going to have a problem. I'm going to decide where I want it to end. And then I'm going to plunk just a little bit of darker color on here. Just a few of these, like this. Okay, now I'm going to take... This is a great, uh, I have one of these pointed, uh, you know, I don't, didn't like them before, but I'm starting to use them more, these little guys. And I'm just going to make some waves. Now, waves are usually whiter and higher in the middle, and then they sort of taper off. And then we're going to have a couple over here. And I have a couple back here. Now, get the white on now for the waves. If you don't get the white on now, guess what? You won't have it later. Right. And um, the waves, the pictures of the waves that I got um, were actually from uh, my vacation. So um, I wanted to make sure that I kind of incorporated a lot of the stuff I saw into this. Now, they may not look like waves. I think they're kind of... Uh, like all in the same row. So let's let's take and pull a little bit of that dark color back. I'm not going to put them there. Put them over here, maybe. Put them right closer to shore. Ah, nuts. Let me try this. That is not working as well as I'd like, so I'm just going to go with the I put some turpentine on here and I'm just cleaning it out. And 
And then I'm just going to real lightly and do the same thing on this side. Now I do want to put a little bit of dark underneath those waves, so I'm going to take my Ashes of Roses and I'm just going to plop it in a couple little places. Usually the waves have a little depth underneath them. I'm just really just touching them. And then we'll do a little on the top too. Maybe I'll wait that for the next time. My first set of waves came out better than I think my second set. Isn't that funny? There we go. Hmm, better. Okay, better. Okay. All righty. You know what? I think my little guy is on here crooked, or his feet are. Hang on. Let me look at this. Yeah, I, it, I did it crooked. Hang on. Let me get my T-square out. Have you ever used a T-square? <laughs> I thought he was straight up and down this way. Uh, but he's not. He's leaning like this. So, he should have a horizon like this. Oh my. For him to be more, I don't know why, but for some reason I must have thought he was... Uh, so his horizon, because he's leaning like this, so his horizon should actually be here. And let's turn it around and put it in the front of him, line it up, and put it here. Okay. Oh, maybe I should use my T-square more often. So let's wipe that off. Make it the sky. It should be darker anyway as you get towards the horizon. So, um, hmm. Let me get this side here so I've got it right. It's there and it's there. Okay. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Had him on there really crooked. Can you see the difference? <laughs> yep, he was really on there crooked. So there's a, a, a hint for you if you need it. If you're painting, if, especially if you use a turntable like I do, it gets kind of confusing at times. And you think, oh my gosh, I've got it on there straight. And then you go to check it and it's not anywhere near straight. So that's actually a little bit better, I think, because you've got the, the waviness of the waves. And we'll just pull it. And then we'll put a little bit of the dark underneath it. Come here, you. Okay. All righty. Saved a little bit there. Okay. That's a little better. There. And you can play with this all you want. Remember, if you put too much white on, that's never a problem. If you put too much dark on, that's a problem. So now you know how a T-square can help you if you have one. You probably, everybody should probably have one. Okay, I'm just going to wipe off the part that goes over the edge here. There we go. Just so I keep it in check. 
All right, now we're going to do the sand. Sand is real simple. Uh, we're just going to do a solid color this time, and we'll do more next time, okay? So um, we're just going to take, I'm using wheat, and you're just going to put it down there. And you might want to add a little bit of a, a warm brown gray or something to it just to give it a little more of a sandy color. It just kind of depends. But you don't add any other colors at this point. This is plenty. We'll add more colors in next time. And see, I'm trying not to get his feet, but you know darn well I'm going to, so. Okay. All righty. So that's, that's about as simple as it gets. Okay. So there's your sand. All righty. Now you go through, and anywhere you got on your bird, you're going to wipe it off. If you need to. Not every word you need to, so that'll work well. Okay, so this is what I have so far. Move it up this way a little bit. There, I think that's a little better. And like I said, if you... If you put too much white here, that's fine. Remember the waves are high in the middle and then they kind of die out on the sides. So, and then you can add more dark next time if you want, you don't have to. So I think I want to make my horizon a little, a little cleaner. There, near you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty. So we'll pull this out of there. Alrighty. Now, the bird is pretty easy. I like doing him. I use, um, actually, I like to use my number 10 or whatever this is. It's a 10 or a 12. I can never remember, but it's a really nice brush. It's one of my favorites. I'm going to be using ashes of roses around his head, or even I could use a cope gray. It doesn't matter. And then um, I'm just going to, now the reason I said make sure he has some blue around his head is because not this time, but the next time you're going to, you're going to want to make sure that it shows up because you have, you have the sun coming this way and basically they have a white head. So the only reason I'm coloring it is just to show that, that it's um, in the shade but, you know, it's a basically a white head, so you don't want to do too much, um, too much color up there. But you do want it to show up, so it's going to be important that you make sure you have some color up there. And, um, and, or behind it. And the behind it is where I fell down when I was doing it um, on my practice plate. I didn't have enough color behind it so that this white section that I'm wiping out right now showed up. Okay? So you're going to you're going to shade them there and you're going to kind of shade them. I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it. You're going to kind of shade them here too. Okay? And then you're going to take and you're going to do a little more of the gray on his neck. Oh, I'm running out of oil. I like this brush because of all my brushes. It gives me the sweetest little shadows you ever had. So that's the reason I like using it. Now see how that red is kind of interfering. But you can't always tell what you're doing, but you're hoping you're doing it right. Okay. And now I'm going to turn him this way, and we're going to start going down his back. Now I'm going to put a little blue in his back. So I'm full loading with Copenhagen Gray, this color. Side loading with the blue, the baby blue. And I'm just doing a little bit down his back. Oops, that's a little more blue than I want, but it really doesn't matter because this is the first coat and you're gonna keep it super, super light on this coat. There, I just put some silver gray in at the very end. Now I'm going to take the blue again, and I'm just going to kind of wipe it over him. There we go. And the blue here. I'm pulling C strokes this way, this way. Those are all C strokes, okay? And down into here, I'm going to put a little blue too, because I just want 
him to have that blue undertone when I put the gray on top of him, a gray on top of it on the next fire, I think it'll really be pretty. So one there. Oops, almost a little too much. There we go. One there. And I lost my line here. One there. And one there. Okay. I got to get some gray with it. Here we go. Uh, there and there. All right, that's better. Okay, and I want a little gray up this way. There. Those two should be separated, so... Nuts. It is giving me a heck of a time. There and there. Okay. We try my Pico Pay. Excuse me. There we go. And this guy needs to come down this way a little more. There we go. Oh, okay. So this is what I have so far. I've just put the color on his back. And then I'm gonna get some gray and we're gonna start doing some of his lower feathers. So I have a silver gray and I'm gonna do the lower feathers down here. You're pushing the paint towards the end of the feather. Now this may be too big a brush and I may want to try the squarer brush because sometimes it's the brush you're using that's giving you the trouble. So let me try this and see if this works a little better. This one comes, oh yeah. Okay, look at this. I'll show you on here now. It was the brush. So I want to come down like this and get the color down at the bottom and down like this and get the color down at the bottom. And full load of gray, a little bit of blue. And I'm just gonna touch these up a little. Here we go. And then down here, I'm gonna do this, okay. And do this. Much better, much better. Okay. Mm. Let's do the tail. No, let's not. Let's do the gray that we still have here. So we have some gray that comes down. He actually has, let me see if I have a pencil here, okay. He actually has a, a little, I'm sorry, a little hump right there. That's where his wing comes out. And his wing comes down this way. And I just want to emphasize the back part of that so that I have it there so that I don't lose it, okay? So I'm going like, oops, like this and coming down here, here, and Yeah. Okay. And that will give me a little more of that that feel. I get that line out of there. When we put the darker colors on, you'll really see this take off. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue right here. Okay, now he does have a little bit of a real light gray. This is Copenhagen gray. It's my lightest gray right here. And all I'm doing is the same thing. I'm just kind of bringing the, the gray up the front of him so that you can see it. Okay, now let's put the black on him. I'm using my itty bitty teeny tiny brush first to do the beak. The bottom part of the beak is shorter than the top part. So I put the beak in. And over that, we have a little bit of black. Of course, I got the right amount of black on there, but I got in the wrong spot. And it's just at the very end edge of his beak. If it doesn't come out dark because of the... the um, Weed underneath right now, that's fine. You can darken it next time. 
And then we're going to do his eye. And his eye is just a, I got to get up here at the top because I don't want to get my hand in anything down here. His eye is just a circle. Little circle. I can even bring it out with a pico pay. And a little bit this way. And a little bit this way. Oops. Come here, you. The smaller the brush, the better. If you need to, you can use a pen. That's okay. It turned out okay. All right. And then I'm just going to pico pay the center of his eye. There. Okay. And then his tail feathers. I'm using a, I think this is a quarter inch brush. I'm going to pick up some black, and I'm going to paint this entirely black. It comes under here. There we go. See a little better that way. And just very gently. I'm just going to put a little black back there, too. These these little, this is a little hard. I'm using my Pico Pay, the side of it, and I'm trying to just wipe out, they're almost like little U-shaped things on the back of his tail. There's one there. There's one here. And there's one here. Okay. All righty dighty. Now we got to do his little feet, his little legs. And I'm going to do them um, in wheat. They're kind of a, the color I see there is kind of a wheat color, so I think that'll work pretty well. So I'm taking the wheat color, which is the same as the background, I know. Coming down, going across, but I'm doing it much darker. And I do have a little bit of a light brown here that I can mix with it. Now, one of the things they have on their legs is they have these little, at least in the picture of the guy I met on my beach, they have these little, um, like, little lines that go across their their legs. So I'm going to put my brush in my medium brown and I'm going to do it sideways like this and I'm just going to, I'm going to try to gently put them on there. Okay and where I missed, like here and here, I will just push it back. Oh, that one doesn't work. I'm going to use a Q-tip. Push it back with a Q-tip. There we go. Okay, and I'll redo them next time. I know they look a little funny right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wash over them next time, and they won't stand out as much. You can also make them a little lighter by just taking the Q-tip and t touching them, and they get a little lighter. But he does have these little bands on his feet, and I want to make sure I put them in now. So he's done, and for the first fire right now, I'm just going to put a little more yellow down here because I need it. Um, I mean, uh, not yellow, the wheat. Um, for the first fire for this, it's basically done. That's all I'm going to do at this point. And then I'm just going to tint my border, and I'm going to do my border now so that then I can do all the work in the background. So this is what I've done so far. This is what we'll do next time. We have a lot more to do as far as color, but this time we're just getting the basic colors in, and the red up in here is is from the 
pen, not the color I used. I used a gray there. So most of this you use um, a light gray or a dark gray. I use a darker gray down here, a lighter gray up here and here, and the light gray with the blue there. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna do the border. I'm just taking baby blue. And I don't wanna make it too dark. Now you have to go around and sort of even it out. Make sure you don't have um, color where you shouldn't. Okay, so that's pretty simple. There's, there's not much to it. I'm going to keep playing with it, of course, because that's just the way we all are. So this is my first fire on this little guy. And this is my second fire. And I don't know that I'm gonna go beyond the second fire because I kind of like the idea that these are really pastel-y kind of plates. And um, then I'll have, I'll have a seagull on one and I'll have some other bird on another in the future. Pick up those brushes, keep painting, and I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.